I'm Matt Williamson and I'm back with my continuing series on the Beatles Get Back Let It Be sessions. In this video we're going to look at the presence of Yoko Ono and the responses by the band to her presence here on Pop Goes the 60s. One, two. This video is really part two of the last video that I did called Exposing the Narratives. In that video we looked at Ringo's contributions, uh, Yoko had been present at a meeting discussing the live show and we talked a little bit about John's heroin use. Now the meeting where they're talking about the live show with Yoko, that happened on the third day of the rehearsals on January the 6th, that was a Monday. And by Friday later that week, George had walked out. So after George left the band on the 10th, they had a meeting at Ringo's on Sunday the 12th. And that meeting ended badly with George walking out of that meeting as well after a slight confrontation with John. So here we are on Monday morning. John didn't come in. George has left the band. So Paul Ringo and some of the others from the entourage are talking about the meeting and Yoko's presence. How was the meeting? The meeting was fine. A lot of good things, but then, you know, they all sort of fell apart in the end. Not long after this, Paul arrives, and Ringo and Paul start to talk about what they're going to do with the day, since they're just down to two people. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, man. I just thought I'd like, you know, a few words for the songs that we haven't got words for and stuff. You know, just rehearse them a bit more. Or what? Yeah. But it doesn't matter, though, you know, if, if we do an extra week and then we decide to chuck it. It's just with the decision yeah. that near. It's good you've sort of said, come to work. I'd have been there, you'd have been down there. That's what I thought, um, yeah. I just thought, what am I going to do tomorrow? I was going to lay in, actually. Yeah. yeah do the garden. That's what you were saying, too. What he means is just the four of you. Yeah, it's just... That's what he means. Yes. Nothing else. Yeah, I'm for that, you know. Yeah, so am I. It's the only yes. way you're going to... That's why he didn't do you say that. But he did his job, didn't he? Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, a key moment that, wasn't it? Yeah. And he put his mentor, I think John knew what he was talking about. Oh, John, sure <laughs> he did. <laughs> That's why George said it twice. When John said, I don't understand you, John, George said, I don't believe you. Again, because he thought you did. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, that's 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 the trouble, you see, because that's it. It's like with your, with our heightened awareness, the answer is not to say anything, you know. But it isn't, because I mean we screw each other up totally when we don't do that, because we're not ready for your heightened <laughs> vows of silence. We're really not. Like, we don't know what the fuck each other's talking about. Yeah. You know, we all just sort of get. But oh yeah, right, yeah. But the, see, that's it. That's why John doesn't say anything. I mean, uh, you know, Yoko's very much to do with it, you know, because she's yeah. very much to do with it from John's angle. That's the thing, you know. There's only two answers. One is to fight it and yeah, fight her sure. and try and get the Beatles back to four people without Yoko and sort of ask Yoko to sit down at the board meeting. Yeah. Or else the other meeting is to uh, the other thing is just to realise she's there, you know, and he's not gonna sort of split with her just for our sakes. You know, and then, and but not, uh, then it's not even so much of an obstacle then, as long as we're not trying to surmount it. Mm. Now, while we're still trying to get over it, it's an obstacle. But it isn't really, it's not that bad, you know. But they want to stay together, those two, you know. So it's all right, let the young lovers stay together, you know. But it, it shouldn't be. Can't right. operate under these conditions, boy. You know, we're coming out. It's like, it's like that, we're like, we're striking. That's what it is, it's like a strike, because... Work conditions aren't right, you know, but yeah, mm. it's not that bad. Yeah. But he, he knows that, doesn't he? John knows that, yeah. sure. But, but does he talk about it at all? Came to a push between Yoko and the Beatles. It's Yoko, yeah. Who'd stay? Oh, sure. But funny enough, the other day when we were talking, he said that he really did not want not to be a Beatle. He no, said no. he really looked forward not to, to you know, there was, he didn't want that screwed up. Mm. All right, so the band is clearly walking on eggshells when Yoko's around, and this has probably gone back to the White Album sessions, and I think a lot of this has to do with John having her do the talking for him, and really I, I, I view this more as an issue with John, and he's putting Yoko in a difficult position too, because why should she do all the talking? John talks these days. It's, it's like it's how Yoko is talking to him. Yeah. Or he's talking to him like, I'm talking to you now. Well, you know I'm talking to Paul and I'm not talking to Linda. Right. Right. You know, but when you're talking to John, you always, these days, anyway, tend to think that you're talking to Yoko mm. more than you're talking to John. And it That's why I say writing a song with him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit embarrassing oh, because I do think it's sort of... What? Oh, yeah, I start examining my motives with Yoko oh, okay. there. Okay. But it's like, we did I Will. We try. We're trying to get the last verse to I will, and eventually I just ended up doing it because we couldn't actually do it. But uh, I mean, Yoko really tried to stay out of it, just sort of got on with something. But she just really, you know, they, they're onto that thing. They just want to be near each other. You know? So you, it, I just think it's a silly of me or anyone to try and mm. say to them, "No, you can't." You know? It's like because because okay, you know, they they they're going overboard about it. But John always does, you know, and Yoko probably always does. So that's their scene. You can't go saying, you know, don't go overboard about this thing. You know, be sensible about it and don't bring it to meetings. You know, it's his decision. Mm. That it's you know, none of our business to like, interfere in that. Even when it comes into our business, you still can't really say much. Unless, except. Look, I don't like it, John. You know, then he can say, well, screw you, or I like it, or, well, I won't do it so much, or blah, 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 blah. But I guess the only way, you know, is to tell John about it. Have you done that already? Well, I told him I didn't like writing songs. Were you writing together you much more before she came around? Oh, yeah, Or sure. you cooled it a bit then, before her? Before you uh, cooled Yeah, cooled it, it, cooled it, sure. Yeah. We'd called it because not playing together. Ever since we didn't play together. You're on stage, you mean? Yes, you, we went because because I mean we lived together when we played together. We were in the same hotel, up at the same time every morning, doing this all day. Mm. And this, I mean, this, you know, you, it doesn't matter what you do like this as long as you're this close all day. Something grows, you know. Mm -hmm. Something. Gets, and then when you're not this close all day, just physically, something goes. Right. So then you can come together to record and stuff. Actually, musically, you know, we we really we we can play better than we've ever been able to play. You know, mm. and I, you know, I'd really think that. I think like <laughs> we we we're all right on that. It's just that being together thing, you know. Mm. You know, I mean, and like I said yesterday, underestimating each other's skills and uh, talking down to each other a bit. 
and playing safe with each other. Yeah, playing mm -hmm. safe and a nice sort of steady retirement. Mm -hmm. All right, so in that exchange, we hear Paul really start to open up about uh, what's going on, trying to make sense of it, trying to be sensitive about it. I think he's trying to be the trying to compromise in some way because I think he realizes if he pushes the yokel issue at all, John will leave the band. But, it's but there's still got to be that the, the compromise yeah. on the line in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm trying to do with the John Yoko thing, you know. Not not to do just. Uh, but it takes two to compromise. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think, you see, I t yeah, okay, so we go on talking like this forever, but I think for, for them to be able to compromise, I have to be able to compromise first. Then they'll be able to, or else they have to be able to compromise first. And but it's, it's silly, neither of us compromise. Yeah, but for, and it's, it's it is at is least one stage if, after. If I can start to compromise, then maybe they can feel that they'll bend a little for me then. Yeah, but if her being around so much has caused a lot of the oh, trouble, that you're compromising already. And you've made a lot of your compromise. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, by, yeah, by, by, by the <laughs> right, yeah. omnipresence. I think it's because we've thought that the only alternative would be <laughs> for John just to say, OK, well, I'll see you then. You know, and we've not wanted that to happen. No. It's, it's incredible, though. I mean, we hustle each other like mad, you know. We, uh, we probably do need, really, sort of a central daddy figure to say, you know, nine o'clock, None of the girls. <laughs> Maybe girls at home, lads. Mm. But it's going to be such an incredible sort of comical thing, like in 50 years' time, you know. Mm. They broke up because Yoko sat on an amp. Or you know? <laughs> <laughs> just something like this. What? So at the very end there, you have Paul essentially predicting exactly what we're doing here, and that is discussing Yoko Ono's presence at these sessions. And obviously... This needs some discussion amongst the members. Do you want to try and ring John? Try and. Did you did you not talk about it much last night? Well, there were just too many people. Two twenty nine camera A. John didn't talk. So Yoga talked for John. Yeah, well, did George stay? Oh well, then in the middle of all Hopefully. that, actually, George went. But he was waiting for it to start. Yeah, that's why it's stepping around. Yeah. But when he saw it wasn't. The thing is, like, a meeting without Yoko just won't be sure. I don't think you'll ever get that. You don't know? So this discussion ends with, with Paul calling up John. John is up and around, and John comes down, and John and Paul have lunch together, and they discuss the George issue. Now, this is Monday the 13th. They have another meeting. Uh, with, to discuss George and with George on the 15th, and that's when things start to get resolved. So I want to switch gears here a little bit and talk about uh, the tone of this meeting and the one from uh, the prior video I did when Yoko Ono was present talking about the potential sh live show. Now, generally speaking, what you're hearing here, what I'm hearing, is our people from the band, Ringo and Paul in particular here with Linda, Michael Lindsay Hogg is president, Neil Aspinall. They are discussing these problems very rationally and very calmly. And what we've always been told is that Paul McCartney has been bossy, bossy, that which made these proceedings into, quote, a disaster. Now here we hear McCartney not only making excuses for John and Yoko, but trying to compromise, understanding that, you know, pushing him too far may end the band. I'd like to bring up an article from the Rolling Stone magazine from 2003. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up because this is a perfect example of how, uh, what was going on in these sessions and how it's generally reported. Now, the Rolling Stone, in this article, uh, 2003, it's called The Beatles Buried Treasure. And it's an article on the recovery of all these Nagra reels from these proceedings. All the film reels and audio reels, apparently they were stolen and recovered near Amsterdam. And the this, this story is not really about that. Actually, the story that the Rolling Stone did in 2003, written by senior editor David Frick, has to do with essentially the whole proceedings of the Get Back, Let It Be sessions. Let me give you an example of what he says here. McCartney countered Lennon's fuck it attitude, compounded by Lennon's addiction to heroin at the time, by assuming almost dictatorial control of the group. So here he's calling Paul McCartney a dictator. Call him a dictator. And what you're hearing in all these proceedings 
is really anything but that. You're hearing a guy trying to compromise, trying to lead the band, but not lead it so far that one of the main members walks out. That to me is not dictatorship. I wouldn't even call that bossiness. Now, there are times when Paul McCartney is bossy during these sessions, but the other three can be bossy too. David Frick continues, with Let It Be the Beatles, the first in so many things as composers and recording artists, made the first rock and roll film about a band falling apart. Those tapes tell the full story, January 1969, at its best and blackest. <laughs> well, actually, David, if you had actually listened to the tapes, you would have got the full story. Clearly, you didn't listen to any of these tapes at all. Not that they were easy to get to, but you know, you could have sent out one of your lackeys to go purchase these, these on disc somewhere. They were bootlegged heavily and put it on your expense account. You know, you would have, if you would have actually listened to what was going on, you wouldn't have to repeat the same tired narrative that was started from the 1971 Jan Wenner interview. Here's another example of something taken out of context during some rehearsals where George Harrison is, well, this is what he's quoted saying in the Rolling Stone. One moment they're joking between takes, the next they snipe at each other with barely veiled contempt. You're so full of shit, man, Harrison actually says to McCarty in the film, oblivious to the camera. Now that is taken out of context. Uh, George Harrison is actually talking about a play that he was at that used this dialogue. And he's telling Paul McCartney, here's how that went. Did she keep saying? And she just keep yelling at me. She was I am full of shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave the, the link for this article below. Uh, there is one other interesting quote that I want to bring up here that's kind of on the other side of this, the record here, and it's a quote by Yoko Ono talking about the Let It Be sessions. Here's what she says. It wasn't that bitter, Ono says, of the Let It Be sessions. The press wanted to sensationalize it because afterward the group was over. But it was a creative time and a big session. It was not a commercial situation where the producer was saying, do this. So that quote even goes contrary to what John Lennon had said about those sessions. So even Yoko wasn't really as harsh about the sessions as John was. I'm going to end the video there today. And I've got a couple other Beatles Get Back Let It Be session videos in the works. I've got a couple up my sleeve, so look for those coming soon. So make sure to share this video with somebody that you might think would enjoy it. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming up. And leave a comment if you like. Thanks for watching. Pop goes the 60s.